Today we're gonna turn this photo, that's my son, into this 3D anime. <laughs> How you doing and welcome back to our channel. Again, my name is Ben. I'm your photographer retoucher. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. So every time I upload such an awesome videos like this, you'll get notified, all right? But before we jump into editing, guys, I would love to let you know that I've already reached more than hundreds of subscribers. So keep on sharing the video guys i really love it I, I take it as a blessing but before we move forward let me do a shout out to nice discoveries less than 50 uh team book tv silixer sixer martrax mabel del rey mariella sonella enzo digital bob michael ginto ex lahora anjinomoto justin bayani and brian dime these are the people that took the time guys to leave a comment below to improve the channel and i would suggest if if you have the time please do leave a comment as well and like every videos that we have all right anyways cut the crap and let's jump into it the first thing i do here is to call up my quick selection tool and separate the head from the body so i could put it on another layer by pressing ctrl j or command j and I have a habit of, you know, copying the background just to be safe. Okay, then call out your free transform tool by pressing Command T or Control T. Enlarge your head as to how you want it. I don't really care. I mean, once you're happy with the head, you know, you gotta clean up your mask as well. So you gotta add mask layer. All right, once you add the mask, just call out your brush tool and put it in black. Cause black conceals, white reveals, right? So clean it up. All right, and don't worry because you know the original photo will be peeking in in the background don't worry about it because we're gonna have to fix it later on and I'll show you how to fix it all right oops there you go and once you're done with this uh, activate your background copy and call out your clone tool and sample to the nearest uh, pixel so there won't be any big discrepancies all right and if you see a discoloration like this all you gotta do is to active your patch tool and sample on the nearby area. There you go, just like magic, right? All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to isolate the shoes so I could, you know, enlarge it like the head. But as you can see, the quick selection tool is not working. I apologize for this, so we have, we're gonna have to use a pen tool. There you go. So, yeah, you gotta learn it and feather it a bit there and then put it on another layer by pressing ctrl j or command j and then free transform tool that's command j on the mac and ctrl j on the pc and then resize it and once you're feeling positive about it uh do the other shoe same procedure okay and judging from my photo here it's too tight so i'll use my crop tool and then click the content to wear on top and good thing we we have a good algorithm with photoshop now you won't have any trouble extending your frame. So let me just uh, disable the head here. <laughs> this is, I wanna see my, my frame. All right, there you go. Okay, once I'm happy with this, I'm gonna turn on the head. Then let's go to the next step. Let's go ahead and merge our layers first. That's command, okay, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, brush your layers and we're gonna use our mixer brush tool guys. And as you can see, I deliberately used a noisy photo because I don't want you to be making an excuse that your photo is different. Because this technique will work with any kind of photos, okay? I tell you now, mixer brush tool is very unforgivable guys. You have to practice and practice to master this tool. <laughs> That's the key, all right? And please, as what I told you from my previous tutorial, guys, don't rush things. It's like wooing a woman, man. You have to calculate and plan your moves ahead of time. So take it easy. Then once in a while, you have to zoom out your photo because you don't want to be sucked up with this technique. And for all you know, you've ruined your masterpiece. And once we're happy with the work, let's move on to the next step. But before that, let's go ahead and rename this layer here so we won't be confused. 
All right, moving on, I'll go to liquify. So if you're confused, it's under your menu, filter, then liquify. Because mine is already set up for hotkeys for those tools that I use often. And then I'm gonna do a tutorial about it next time. But for now, yeah, go to your liquify. And there are two tools that I use here, all right? The forward warp tool. See the first option? That's the, the, the hand pointing or something like that. And the pocker tool. I love the sound of that. Pocker tool. What it does is it moves the pixels towards the center of the circle, okay? So it compresses whatever uh, parts of the body you are trying to pocker tool with, okay? Okay, so let me move on the lips using the pocker tool. Yeah, I just love the sound of it. All right, and if for example, it distorted uh, the pixels too much, you could always use your forward warp tool to fix it. And what it does is it pushes the pixels of an image forward, you know, as you drag it to fix those unwanted distortions. All right, take this for example, the nose holes. <laughs> is there such a word as nose holes? The nose trills, okay? I'm gonna have to at least make it proportional to one another. So I'm gonna use my, <laughs> I'm gonna use my forward warp tool, okay, for this. Okay, once I'm happy with the result, let's move forward. And this time, we're gonna do the dreaded eyes, man. This is the part where you can't skip the video. You're gonna have to deal with my voice, whether you like it or not. And follow the steps carefully, guys, but not religiously, because this part is quite confusing. Okay, go to your shape tools and uh, choose circle. Hold down the shift key and drag it so you could have a perfect circle. And then rearrange it or realign it with the eyes. And then fill it with white. That will serve as your eyeball. <laughs> yeah, eyeball. There you go. And then call out your pen tool. And then reshape it accordingly. I mean, how you would like the eyes to look like. Okay, and then make a path. So once you are okay with the shape of the eye, you could go ahead and mask it. Don't worry about this. If this happens, uh, you could always fix it by uh, pressing your control I or command I. It means that it's inverting the mask, okay, to reveal the effect. Okay, then I'll do some more adjustments. But mind you guys, this is not the final positioning of the eyes because it's very hard to, you know, get it right the first time. This is a trial and error, at least for me, okay, how it would look like if I already have the iris and everything. But for the meantime, I, I'll be adjusting it some more to my liking. Okay, and once I am quite okay with it, I'll right-click the layer and apply the layer mask. And then once you're done with it, you're gonna have to make four copies of this, all right? And then put one of them underneath the original layer because this will serve as your outer glow. And we don't want to affect the eyeball with this. Make sure the remaining two copies are clipped to the eyeball because we'll be using it later on and you'll understand why. Because we just want to affect the eyeball with this and not the remaining layers beneath the eyeballs, okay? Activate your eyeball layer, double click to call out your layer style. And from here, add your drop, drop shadow. As what I told you, follow it carefully but not religiously, meaning because this will differ from photo to photo. Because this will depend where your light is coming from so this is not an exact formula but you know I'm, I'm just showing you this guys for you to have a gauge on how i do it but these are not the correct numbers for a different photo guys so you're gonna have to eyeball this see what i've done there guys eyeball huh? <laughs> so what it does is it creates a black lining outer lining to the eye and it gives off shadow as well the trick here is instead of using black, you're gonna have to sample on the shadows of your photo so it will blend in more. And then hit OK once you're happy with it and play around with the sliders cause you know, every photo has a different lighting source. Again, these are not the exact numbers, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and click on inner shadow. This is the second step, third step rather. And then play around with the sliders. Just make sure 
that it is complementing where, where the light is coming from so it will look natural okay and before I forget just make sure the blending option is multiplied then activate your outer glow layer that's underneath your eyeball layer click on uh, outer glow and again these are not exact numbers guys just make sure your blending option here is screen and this differs the numbers that you see here differs for every photo guys these are not exact numbers so you're gonna have to uh, trial and error do a trial and error and once it's, it looks good just go ahead and click on the OK button and actually I made a boo-boo here let me rename these two layers here the two clipped layers to inner shadow okay sorry about that because it might be confusing to you guys okay then activate the first clipped layer and click on inner shadow and it was clipped because we don't want to affect uh, the outside of the eyeball that we're doing here it is mainly concentrated to the inner part of the eyeball again these are not exact numbers guys because this differs from your light source or whatever because these shadows should complement where the light is coming from okay okay now I'm happy with this I'm gonna work on the last clip layer and this will be the icing on the cake guys this will tie up everything all right it will give depth to the eyes as, as you can see here again let me reiterate not an exact numbers okay so you're gonna have to judge this according to where your light is coming from okay once happy uh, just move on to the next step but for me I'm gonna play around with the opacity because I, I think it's too much the effect is too much for me so yeah you could play around with the opacity and see what works for your photo okay okay once done uh, group everything and and then rename it uh, as it pleases you afterwards let's uh, play around with the iris so call up your shape tool get the circle and then press as what I told you shift to get a perfect circle and then put it on a layer fill it with whatever color of the eyes you would like to have your photo don't worry about the size at this point because you you can always change it later on but for the color of the eyes I'll, I'll choose brown I don't know why then I'll control J or command J to copy the layer and fill it with black this will serve as your pupil and then command T or control T to bring up your transform free transform tool and then resize it accordingly okay once happy copy the layer one more time and this will serve as the reflection of your light so fill it with white and then command T or control T to pull up your free transform tool and then resize it again accordingly and from here it gets a little bit easier just rename all those uh, layers just not to confuse you okay it's getting together now all right so next step is I'll be calling out my dodging tool because I'm gonna add some highlights to the eye to give it more life and soul okay and just to be more clear we are on the iris layer right and then just put those lines all across the eye work on it slowly but surely guys all right, I'm gonna have to fast forward this a bit because this will be boring for you and a waste of time. So here we go. That was a cool song, right? Okay, I'm adding highlights here. Okay, just a little more. Okay. So this is the part where the light exits. That's why it's a bit uh, brighter than the usual. Okay, once you're done, uh, I guess I'm not yet. <laughs> Let me... Okay, there you go. Once you're done, really done, zoom it out just to check if it's working. Double click the, the layer. 
Iris Slayer and put an inner shadow and what it does is it creates that black lining around the iris and more shadows so it gives more depth so again there are no exact numbers here guys this depends on every picture or the size of your iris towards your pupil or whatever but this is not an exact numbers once you think you're okay with it just go ahead and group them all together okay shift click and then uh, command or control G and then copy it this will serve as your left eye so I'm gonna go ahead and free transform it and then flip it horizontally okay now I'm, I'm just placing the eyes here again not I don't know what I'm doing here <laughs> not really it, it is just uh, it, it is a trial and error guys so you're gonna have to uh, you know I'm having a hard time doing this as well but yeah just transfer the reflection of the light I guess that's it for me so all I have to do now is to blur everything a bit the iris the reflection the pupil but not too much guys just to give it a blend Okay, <laughs> we are nearing the end of our editing guys so just stick with me because we will be doing the artistic part of the editing later on alright but you can't get away with burning and dodging so if you haven't watched one of my videos uh, in editing with the burning and dodging so if I may indulge you guys it's gonna be on the description below the link it's a win-win situation for all of us okay alright now I'm gonna call out my curves adjustment and darken it a bit uh, this is this will serve as my burning layer so after calling out your brush just make sure it's on white so you could reveal the effect and you are on low opacity as well and brush those shadows into the picture underneath the eyebrows there here there and everywhere <laughs> anyways yep just brush it careful ever careful guys then I create my burning layer through uh, curves adjustment and then you know lighten up those uh, unwanted shadows to the face so it will be more smoother to the eyes because that will give you the 3d effect okay okay now that I'm happy with it I'm gonna go ahead and do the creative part of editing I already added the flying papers guys and, but mind you on the description below you can download uh, everything that I've used here all right so you can practice at home while we are on ECQ or enhanced COVID quarantine is that how you call it I don't know oh community not COVID anyways okay let me let me explain to you guys how I did this paper flying papers okay all right the first look of my papers are like this guys and then I created a mask and then uh, brush out those unwanted papers on the face and whatnot okay and then to blend the color of my papers more to my photo I created a, a curves adjustment and then from the green I increased the green a bit okay just just to have uh, a harmonious color with the background so there you go so now it's good enough for me I go ahead and disable the layer first and work on the background okay so what I did is to merge all the layers and then I'll call out my lasso tool and isolate my subject from the background so in order to do that is you have to have it on a different layer so that's command J control J so after isolating my selection I put a layer mask in between them this is where I'll put the red background so call up my brush, change the color of it to red, and free transform tool, that's command T or control T, and adjust the size of my red background. Don't worry about this speed guys, because we could fix it, because we could put a layer mask on it and then brush it off with black to hide those peel colors on your subject. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm sorry guys, because I'm maybe you're, you're thinking why am I a bit sloppy because this is a tutorial I don't want to waste your time on you know perfecting this picture 
but I'm sure I'll fix this afterwards. But so here you go. Here's here are your papers and the background, and they are blending well together. It looks nice to the eyes. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is to add some contrast to the photo because it brings out more life to it. Okay. And the way I did this, let me just uh, show you. So I created the mighty S curve using my curves adjustment and this will bring life to the photo and if you feel it's too much you could always play around with your opacity guys the way I do this is I lower down the opacity and then slowly bring it back and I think that the background is too much for my taste so I'll go ahead and attack it with opacity as well and once I'm happy with it there you go and I'll add the ropes which I downloaded from Divine Art. So shout out to the people in Divine Art for making such wonderful stock photos. Anyways, the last part of editing that we'll be doing here is to create a little bit more of contrast but leaving out the face because I would love the face to stand out uh, amongst everything that you see here in the photo, okay? So how do I do that? Again, a, a bit of S-curve and then call up my brush and then brush off the effect uh, from the face of my subject. So it will create an illusion that there are more lights falling into the face of our subject and it will stand out more, okay? All right, guys, so we are done with the editing. Good Lord, thank you for that. So this is your before and after. And I hope you have learned something, guys, okay? And, and I really appreciate you sticking with me throughout the tutorial. And if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, I'll be releasing a lot more of this. So I suggest click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell. So every time I upload new things, you'll be notified. And please share the love to your friends, guys. Just go ahead and... Share this link to them. This might help them with their photography as well as their editing skills. So you never know. Alright? So before I go, I would like to say I hope you are all doing well together with your family in this time of crisis. I'm out.